Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Daily Bible Study for the Sinai Church of Christ. If you have been to our building, you know where we are. If, however, you are joining us from someplace else in the world or someplace else in the Philippines, we wish to welcome you to the Daily Bible Study for the Sinai Church of Christ. We are located in the city of Silang, Cavite, Philippines, in the Bayan or city proper, and we wish to that which is about 30 miles or 50 kilometers south of Ninoy Aquino International Airport or downtown Manila. We are glad that you are with us, and we hope that our study of God's word is of benefit to you today. As always, we start with a prayer request and Rachel, Raquel, you're up first. Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir, Fred. Good morning, ma'am, Cora. Uh, first of all, I want to thank God for all the blessings, for all the guidance, and my prayer request is still uh, good help for my family and especially for my mother. That's all. Thank you. Miss Janet, good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. Uh, first, I would like to thank for the answered prayer again uh, because my clients reserve a unit and pray for my spiritual and physical strength. That's all, sir. Thank you. We'll do it. Good morning, Jovi. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my prayer request is uh, Thanksgiving, as always, for all the blessings and still the knowledge and wisdom and uh, help, uh, good health, guidance, and protection for uh, my entire family and for all of us. That's all, sir. Good morning, Buena. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. My prayer request is for everyone's safety, and that's all, sir. Okay. Archie, how's your little girl doing? Uh, she's okay now, but my wife, uh, I, my prayer request is for my wife. Right. Uh, for, for her good, for the uh, good result of her examin physical examination. Right. Now, we need to give praise because she came back with a clear EKG, right? Yes, sir. Echocardiogram. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, and now she's having some more tests? Yes, sir. Uh, the, uh, the, the result will be in Saturday. Okay. Very good. I hope Anna Lynn, good. good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mom Cora. Good morning, everyone. My prayer requests are, first of all, thanksgiving for all the blessings that we receive every day. Uh, secondly, uh, continuous healing for Zaldi and Mildred. And lastly, good health and more blessings for all of us. That's all. Thank you. Now, if I remember what you told us, uh... Mildred had actually kind of taken a little, had gotten a little more serious. Is that correct, Anna? Yes, sir. Her MRI, MRI result uh, got a lot of findings. Okay. Well, we need to keep that in our prayers. Thank you, sir. Okay. Miss Wilma, uh, your, sis your sister-in-law, she has a chemo coming up next week, right? Yes, sir. On the 25th. Okay. Uh, continuous prayer for my sister in law. Okay. Beautiful woman, good morning. Good morning, all. Good morning, everyone. Uh, continuous healing prayer for the same group of people um, Rosella, Claudio, Mr. Kelly, and Teresa. Uh, in addition, um, Daryl's wife, a healing prayer for Daryl's wife as well, and victim of the fire in Maui.
Miss Beth, good morning. Can you say uh, Rosella, Claudio, Daryl? Nelly. Daryl's wife and who? No, we got Rosella Nelly. and Claudio, yes. Kelly and Teresa. Daryl's wife. And then Daryl's wife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the people in Hawaii. The fire victims. Miss Beth, good morning. Hold on just uh, a second, good, Beth. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning, Ma'am Cora. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my prayer, my uh, Thanksgiving first for the protection. Uh, more knowledge, uh, my prayer request, uh, more knowledge and wisdom, more appointment and email, uh, good health and protection for me and for my entire family. Thank you, sir. Okay. Giselle, good morning. Yes, sir. Um, good morning. Um, my prayer request, sir, as always, um, knowledge and wisdom, uh, answered prayer for my request and um, uh, protection for everybody. That's all, sir. Okay. Janet, how did you get at the bottom of the list? Sir? Okay. You guys shuffled on me. You got at the bottom. You were up at the top a minute ago. Do you have a prayer request today, Janet? Uh, or, uh, more clients to come, sir. Okay, and that's right. And we're giving praise because you have a client that reserved today, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Archie, all right. Fred, how's things going for you, brother? I just want to ask uh, Anna. She um, just can you said something about an MRI? Can she repeat that? Anna, uh, the MRI result of my sister Mildred uh, got a lot of findings. Okay, got you. Oh, yeah, myself. I'm just waiting for uh, you know feedback from after doing the uh, health evaluation and security check. Yes. Just waiting for that. So you haven't been picked up for bank robbery anytime recent, right? No, no. <laughs> uh, keep in prayer to my wife. Um, yeah, it just seems like there's some things going on uh, with her so that we hopefully can uh, resolve and have a discussion about Morning, Chris. Morning, guys. You have prayer requests this morning? Uh, prayer request uh, for the my new business to continue to prosper and uh, to gain more customers. And um, yeah, for the good health for the entire family. All right, Fred, give us a prayer, brother. All right. Lord, we come before you just giving you thanks for allowing us to uh, gather together as a family. And we want to lift up prayers for you, for you to be uh, glorified in all things. We have, you know, just general prayers. Uh, we pray for health and strength, for wisdom, for safety, and for uh, continued understanding of knowledge and truth. We want to glorify you in all things. We want to glorify you in all things and lift you up uh, and, and, and praise you for, you know, just the challenges that we have in, in our life to help us to grow, for the victories that you, that you uh, provide for us um, and, and growth. And we also have uh, specific prayers uh, like uh, Archie asked for prayer specifically for uh, the physical exam of his wife. We help pray for her, her health and, and her strength. Uh, Mildred asked for prayers for um, Anna asked for prayers for uh, for Mildred for the uh, findings on the MRI. We pray for the healing of her situation circumstance. 
a woman asked for prayers for her sister-in-law's health. Um, Cora asked for prayers for uh, Gisela, Claudia, Daryl's wife, Kelly, Teresa, for their health and strength. And we also lift, lift up the, the victims in, in Hawaii uh, as a result of their fire. We pray for uh, their strengthening. We also pray for Beth, um, um, uh, Janet, um, and Beth, and Gisela asked for general prayers. Um, Janet asked for prayers for, for more clients. And we just give you thanks for the ones, the, the, the client that has confirmed uh, an appointment with her. Uh, we also uh, ask, pray, uh, Chris asked for prayers for health and uh, for new business. Uh, also ask for prayers for the um, transition um, and, and the results of the health um, exam and, and security clearance. It all goes well with that. We also pray for guidance and direction with, in regards to uh, the lawyer. And we also pray for uh, my wife for her health and strength and encouragement and um, resolution of uh, uh, feelings of depression and disheartenment. And we lift this up and ask you for you to be glorified in all things. In Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, open your Bibles, please. First Peter chapter four. Let's start us in verse six. Raquel. First Peter chapter four, verse six. For this is why the gospel was preached even to those who are dead. That to, through, uh, that though judge in the flesh the way people are, they, they might live in the spirit the way God does. Okay, now comparing, Raquel, comparing verse 4 with verse 6, what lessons might we draw? In verse in verse four. Thank you. Uh comparing verse four to verse six is in verse four. I think sir, I think in verse four, preaching for the people who is still alive. And yes. verse six. In in verse six, um, you cannot preach for the people who are dead, but there the judge the judgment is there also, even you are already dead. So you said you cannot preach for those who are dead. Yes, sir. In one sense, that's correct. Can somebody else give me a different take on that? How might we preach to people who are dead? Can. Of course. Go ahead, Fred. Those who are like spiritually dead. Meaning? Like those out, outside of Christ. Uh, okay. Because if we can, I don't know about the rest of you guys. I'm going to talk about me. Okay. If I had continued on the path I was on before I became a Christian, the end result thereof would have been spiritual death. Somebody had to preach unto those who were headed on the path to hell. We have to change our way, right? Somebody has to teach us. Otherwise, we will never learn. Verse 7, please, Joey. So, first Peter chapter 4, verse 7. The end of all things is at hand. 
Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. There's some teaching here that we have to be careful of because there are some people who will teach that the end of all things, meaning the return of Christ, has already occurred. And there are some verses that they will use to go along with that. Give me Romans chapter 13, verse 12. Romans chapter 13, verse 12. Wait a Thirteen twelve. Okay, Romans chapter thirteen, verse twelve. The night is far gone; the day is at hand. So then, let us cast off the works of darkness, and put on the armor of light. Okay, so the night is over. The day is at hand. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 5. Philippians chapter 4, verse 5, Anna. Is everybody there? Mm -hmm. Page 1258. Okay. Okay. Philippians chapter 4, verse 5 says, Let your reasonable bless. Ah, sorry. Reasonable. Let your. Oh, sorry. Chap chapter 4, verse 5 says, Let your reasonable boldness be known to everyone the lord is at hand the lord is at hand james chapter 5 verse 8 miss wilma James chapter 5, verse 8. You also be patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. The coming of the Lord is at hand. 1 John chapter 2, verse 18. 1 John chapter 2, verse 18. Fred. First John chapter two, verse 18 reads. Dear children, this is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now, many Antichrists have come. This is how we know it is the last hour. Now, as we've studied through the New Testament, I'm sure that you've heard me point it out before that neither Jesus Christ nor the apostles really understood the return of Christ was going to be in their lifetime. There are those who teach it. The entire New Testament is written as a guide for the redeemed, those of us who have been saved. And it's likely that such expressions, you guys have heard me talk about this before, I don't preach a lot about the end of the world. Why not? Because not much is known. It's not what we should focus because, on. Go ahead. Be, because, what is it we should uh, go ahead, your, your end because your end of your, the end of your world might be it's a lot nearer than the end of the world. Is it possible Jesus Christ will come back tonight, today, within the next 24 hours, within the next seven days? Sure, it's possible. possible. But we don't know. Is it possible that the end of your world will come within the next 25 years? For virtually yeah. all of us, that answer is a certainty. 
So what the time of the Lord, it is appointed unto man to die. To die once. 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 And after this, judgment. It's what judgment. we should focus on is the return, the end of our world. And I believe that's what the apostles are telling us here. In that we, for each and every one of us, the end of our time is near. It can absolutely be said that every man, barring the return of Christ, will die. And for each and every one of us, the time is near. And if you don't think 25 years is near, then you just haven't lived as long as I have. It won't take that long. We have to live in a manner worthy of the return of Christ because we don't know when he is going to come back. Another reading on this particular text is that the persecution of Nero uh, broke out against the Christians, and it sent many thousands of them to their physical death. Now, we right now today don't live in an environment where being a Christian can lead us to physical harm. But I do believe that persecution will return and that physical death for serving Christ very well may become a possibility for all of us during our lifetime. I hope not. I pray not. But it's entirely possible. First John chapter four, verse eight, uh, Korah. First John, no, not, not chapter first John. Four. We're, we're in first Peter. Where did my brain go? First Peter, chapter four, verse eight. First Peter, chapter four, verse eight. It says, above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Now let's talk. Let's be honest. Are we to have agape love for each other? Yes. Is it possible that even though we love each other, inadvertently or in a moment of human weakness, is it possible that we might offend each other? Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Is it possible we might say or do something that's insensitive and hurt somebody's feelings? Yes. 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 However, if we have that love for each other, will we be able to overcome those sins? Yes. Sure. That's what love, that's how love works, right? We're going to say something. We're going to do something that's going to hurt somebody's feelings. And I in no way intend to offer an excuse for that. But we need to be able at the same time to overlook the faults of somebody else. Give me Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 12. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 12. Miss Beth? Sir, Proverbs? 10. 10, 12. Oh, I mean. Sir, uh, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 12. Uh, hatred, hatred stir up strife, but love covers all offenses. Love covers all offenses and that's the kind of love we're supposed to have 
James chapter 5 and verse 20, please, Janet. James 5, verse 12. 20. At 20. Verse 5, verse 20. Yes, please. Let him know that who, whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. Is it possible that we might sin? Yes, it's possible yes. for any of us. But if we restore, and this is a, people read James chapter five to a wrong understanding. If I fall away and start being foolish and Chris restores me, is Chris covering his sins? And the answer is no. But by bringing me to a rela relationship of repentance to Christ, he's covering my sins. Mm -hmm. We might walk away. We might fall away. We might get caught up in the ways of the world. You guys have heard me talk about this before. We might make many sins. But if somebody brings us to repentance, they're not covering their sins, the person who brings us back is not covering their sins, they're covering our sins, because there's only one way to cover sins. What is that way? Blood of Christ. The blood of Christ. Having a repentant, faithful relationship with Christ is the only way that our sins can be forgiven. So if you restore somebody who has fallen away. You're not covering your sins. You're covering their sins. And the blood of Christ will cover all sins. There's only one sin that cannot be forgiven. What is that sin? Disobedience. Blasphemy. Go ahead. You, you guys are getting close. Unrepented sin. Thank you, Marvin. The sin for which you will not repent. If you will repent, your sins can be forgiven. But we have to be willing and able to repent, right? First Peter chapter 5, verse 9. First Peter chapter 5, verse 9. Archie? First Peter chapter 4, verse 9 says... No, chapter 5. Show yeah, go ahead. 9. 4, 9. You're right, Archie. Go ahead. 4, 9. It says, show, show hospitality to one another without grumbling. Grumbling. What does that word mean to you? Uh, grumbling. Yes. Complaining. What's he say, Fred? Complaining. 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 Without oh, no. complaining, right? Hospitality, Christian hospitality is frequently commanded in the New Testament. But we have to understand that grace has to flow out. If we don't understand the grace that Jesus Christ has shown us, we are not going to show that grace to the, those that are around us. Hospitality, without murmuring, without complaining, with, without doing it in a grudging manner. This doesn't fulfill the apostolic command that we see written here in 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 9. The comfort, the joy, the well-being of being a guest is that we show hospitality one to another. We show forgiveness one to another. And I believe that's what the Apostle Peter is talking about here. Verse 10, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. Chris? 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. It should be 
use whatever gift as each has received the gift use it to serve one another as good stewards of god's varied grace as good stewards of god's grace understand we each have received a gift from god maybe you have the talent of singing maybe you've been given material wealth maybe you've been given the ability to teach maybe you have been given some other gift and the long list goes on and on everything that we have should be viewed by the christians as a gift from god gift from god himself to us however we received it we need to use it for serving the body of christ the people's possessions are not theirs to keep because we have to be faithful stewards those of you who've been around for a while have heard me say this i own nothing because everything i have belongs to god, to god. share it and by the way for those of you who are new who haven't done this much yet i'm going to pick on chris for a second is that okay chris yeah how does it make you feel when you share the gospel with somebody else oh it's like fulfilling to me fred like, ha go ahead chris i'll i won't step on you yeah it's it's fulfilling um and it's, it's like you are um like you are you feel uh accomplished you know to what you are supposed to do in a day it, it drives you more right and fred makes you calm yeah how does it make you feel the first time somebody says yes i want to accept jesus christ through the act of baptism for the remission of my sins yes you feel excited you know uh, like and you feel that you uh provide you know tremendous amount of, of value which one miss wilma sure. how does it make you feel when you watch somebody that you've mentored and taught become a christian there is a feel uh overjoyed that overjoyed. cannot be explained yeah it, it's hard to explain right cora how does it make you feel um happy happy marvin uh, of course sir happy because uh, i'm being an effective teacher and god used me as an instrument to save another another soul can you explain that with you did it by the way you did a very eloquent job of explaining it in words but do the words really explain it it's god's word who explained it very good it's not because it, words cannot express the joy that you feel as you share the gifts that god has given you with others verse 11 first peter chapter 4 verse 11 we got time that's going to be the last one marvin read that for us please first peter chapter 4 verse 11 says whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of god whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that god supplies in order that in everything god may be glorified through jesus christ to him belong glory and dom dominion forever and ever amen now the word oracles the first time we see this word in the new testament it's referring to the law of moses give us acts chapter 7 verse 38 miss Giselle. acts chapter 7 verse 38 um acts chapter 7 verse 
38 this is the one this is the one who was the was in the congregation in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him at mount sinai sinai and with sinai. sinai sinai and with our fathers he received living oracles to give to us he received the so that's the first place that we see the word oracles get my brain working here in the new testament and that is the greek word lagizomai lagizomai uh that's a greek word that means the oracles the commands the law of god that's the first place we see it is acts chapter 7 verse 38 yes that's the first time we see it in the new testament however we also see it referring to something else romans mm -hmm. chapter 3 and verse 2 romans chapter 3 and verse 2 raquel Romans chapter 3 verse 2 much in every way to begin with the Jews were entrusted with the oracles of God so what we see here is that the oracles of God not only refers to the commandments that were given to the Jews but it also refers to the commandments that were given to the Christians. It's also addressed to, give me Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. Joey, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. For though by this time you ought to be, to be teachers you need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of god so you need we we see a parallel here acts chapter 7 romans chapter 3 the word oracles refers to the levitical or mosaic law however by the book of hebrews chapter 5 and in 1 Peter chapter 4, we see the same word, oracles, referring to the New Testament mm -hmm. teachings, the law of Christ as well. These are lessons that we need to apply. The oracles of God for us that are binding on us are the commands contained in the New Testament. Give me Hebrews chapter 1. Start us in verse 1, Buena. One one. Okay. Long ago, at many times in any many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. So God spoke to our fathers, our spiritual fathers, by the prophets. Verse two. Anna. And verse two says, "But in these last days." He, he has, has spoken, spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. Okay, so we see in verse one that God spoke to our spiritual fathers, how? By the prophets, including by the Moses. prophets. In verse two, we see that he speaks to us through his, his son, son, by the word of God right yes and it's 7:44 i've run over again i thought i had time sorry guys 